Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a couple of things with color in Adobe InDesign. Um, so we're going to work with a couple of tools. We're, of course, going to work with our selection tools. Um, we'll work a little bit with our type tool. And then there's an important tool down here that you're going to want to select. If you hold down on this one, um, you don't want the color theme tool, which is the little eyedropper with the little color scheme there. And we don't want the measure tool. We want the eyedropper tool. So you're going to want that as well. Um, you also want to go here and make sure that you have access to the color window, the stroke window. Um, you're going to need those things. And if you don't see any of those things, you can always go up here to window and make sure that they have a check mark by them and that will open them in their own little window. But usually you should see them right here. So I want to start by showing you how to change the color on text. So if you go to one of your words and you double click on it so you get the cursor and you highlight it, you can then go over here to color and you'll notice a few things. Um, you'll notice that there's a fill color and there's a stroke. If you click on that, you can see the stroke color. Right now, we don't have a stroke. Stroke is the outline. Fill is what color it's filled in with. Um, you'll notice that there's color selections here. If you go and you don't see color selections on one, it's just a black scale. You can go here to RGB and all of a sudden you have all the choices. But rather than picking a random color for this, one of the best things you can do in design is pull color from an image you already have on the page. So since I already have this image of Chance the Rapper, I'm going to leave this word highlighted like that. I'm going to grab the color selection tool, the eyedropper tool, and I'm going to go pull sort of this maroon, dark maroon color from his hat. And now, of course, it looks like it changed it blue, but if you select off of there, you'll see it changed it and it matches that. So one thing you can do now is if you want to use that color again, when you have this highlighted, go click here. You're going to hold down the control key, key and click. That's like right -click clicking on a Mac. You're going to go add to swatches, and it's going to add that color to your swatches, which will be helpful later. So for instance, now I can highlight this word, and I can go over here to swatches. And if you look down here, instead of going from the color palette there, you can pick your color that you already had. So I'm going to highlight all of these words and I'm going to use that color that we pulled out and change all of them to that color. Now, let's say you want to have an outline color too. This isn't super popular now, but it's very simple. Um, all you have to do is click on the stroke out here, make that one the one in the front, and you can do the same thing. You can go grab your eyedropper tool. Let's say you want to use a little bit of this blue color for the stroke. Now you can look. It's very faint to see on here right now, but there's a blue outline there. By the way, if you want to know how to zoom in and out, that's Command Plus and Command Minus on your keyboard. If you want to make that stroke thicker, you can highlight it and you're going to go to stroke over here and you're going to just increase the weight of that stroke and then increase the thickness. Now I will say this look isn't really in style right now so I'm actually not going to have that outline. I don't want to see it. I don't want the outline so I've gotten rid of it, made it zero so that we don't see that. Um, I'm going to zoom back out and I actually really like the look of the plain clean look there with the white background but let's say you say hey I want to add a background to this so what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over here and you're gonna grab the rectangle tool remember if you hold down there's a ellipse tool which creates circles and ovals and a polygon tool but you want the rectangle tool and you're gonna go up here and you're gonna just draw a box the size of the whole page. Now right now, if you go over to color, you'll notice I've got a black outline, but this white with the red line through it is nothing. There's no fill. So I could literally switch those if I wanted by clicking the little switch arrow. And so what you can do here is once you have this, you notice you can't see anything. You can click on that box and you can go to object arrange send to back now that box is in the back and and um, it's it's back behind there so that if you want to select these things you can when this was in the front object arrange bring to front you can't select those things so we want to keep this in the back because that's where it belongs um, 
But let's say that this black is just kind of dark and it doesn't look as good as that white. I can also see that I have a faint stroke on this still. So I'm going to go here and, and get rid of that stroke. Um, so I want to change the color of this background. I can go over here as long as I'm not clicking inside one of these frames where there's uh, it can get through to this background layer. I can select that background layer. I'm going to make sure my fill is selected. Now I'm going to go here to the eyedropper tool and now I'm going to pull that blue from right here. Ah, I like that much better. Now I have a solid background color because we cut out this image, that background's coming through, and I feel good about my poster. Um, so you should know how to manipulate color on here now. Uh, pay attention to whether you have your fill um, selected or your stroke selected. You should know how to use the eyedropper tool and uh, move things around. So um, get your poster how you like it, get it finalized, get it looking the way you want it to look, and, um, and then you can save it and export it, which will be the next thing that I show you how to do um, in the next video. I'm going to fix this real quick so that you can see even I make mistakes and it's good to go. So I'm going to go to File, Save. Since I've already saved it before, it's going to save it in the same place as long as I'm logged in to the server.